Hello everyone, welcome to today's fireside chat. I'm excited to be here with Remy Kadeen, uh, Principal Research Scientist at Hugging Face. Today we'll be discussing uh, the recent collaboration between Trust and Robotics' Aloha Kits and Hugging Face's innovative Lirbot Toolkit. We have fully integrated Aloha hardware into the Lirbot toolbox and this opens up a world of opportunities for machine learning researchers and developers. Remy, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, to kick things off, could you please give us an overview of uh, Lirbot and its primary goals? Yeah, thank you uh, so much, uh, Shantanu, for the invitation. And uh, yeah, so um, let me introduce Lirbot. So it's a, it's a Python library, uh, fully open source. Uh, that we created uh, six months ago. And its goal is to lower the barrier to entry for AI, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to AI for robotics. So what it means is that we want to have very simple code that allows you to control a robot arm, to record uh, trajectories, a data set of trajectories, and to automate the behavior mm -hmm. of the robots uh, using by training neural networks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can let the neural network control each motors of the robot arm to pick up some, uh, some objects, to fold t-shirts or whatever task you, you may need to automate. So uh, now that you have said that Lirbot is designed to make it easier for developers working with robots and machine learning, can you give us a quick overview of how it helps from recording episodes to training and evaluating models? Yeah, so um, inside Lirbot, uh, we have uh, all, the, all the software, actually the middleware, to uh, talk directly to the motors and to control the arms. We have, we have this. And we, we don't hide the complexity to the user. Uh, we just try to make the complexity simple mm -hmm. to grasp for any newcomer. So it's not the robot. It's a, it's a project which is not made for uh, roboticists uh, only, but also for um, uh, AI practitioners, uh, be it res researchers, but also engineers or hobbyists or students. Uh, and, and basically, so we have this middleware that you can read. It's in Python. Uh, you can read it. And with simple um, functions to teleoperate. So it means uh, I move a, a leader arm, a first arm, and I can, I can control a follower arm. So I can try the teleoperation uh, and make sure it's smooth, it's fast. Um, and then I can record the data sets. Mm -hmm. so, during the recording step, we actually um, uh, re uh, keep track of the state of the leader, uh, of the state of the follower arm, of the uh, the action that we uh, that we need to send to the follower arm for it to move. We also um, have a multi-processing that uh, uh, gets uh, the the frame from the cameras and 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 keep track of of them during the recording, and it's. In Python, but it's quite uh, it's super efficient. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the recording, we create a low robot data set, okay. which is a, a, a format for our data set, mm -hmm. a video format, which is simple and quite um, um, it, it's made for storage, but also for uh, fast access to it. Okay for training neural networks. Mm -hmm. But most, most importantly is that you can upload, you, you, it comes with a set of functionalities, you can upload it to the Hugging Face Hub and share it. Mm -hmm. And we have a tool uh, that, that which is able to visualize mm -hmm. this data set. Okay. And so, um, yeah, and so after that, uh, we also have uh, uh, models mm -hmm. like state of the art uh, uh, models in uh, in the in the repo. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we try to not hide the complexity, but to to make it super simple to have one file 
like to follow the good practice, mm -hmm. the good practices of, of uh, the, the Hugging Face Transformers mm -hmm. uh, library. And um, so that people can really understand the model. Mm -hmm. And we have a set of tools to train this model. So you, you can, you can choose uh, the, the, what, the one you want. Uh, we, 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 uh, we have three uh, uh, models that are based on, on three, uh, on the three state of the art generative model. Mm -hmm. uh, so in particular, we have a diffusion, mm -hmm. uh, we, we generate uh, trajectories mm -hmm. instead of pages. Uh, we have um, vector quantize, which, which is another type of generative model. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the, uh, the, the variational autoencoder, so uh, ACT, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that uh, Alo Aloha uh, uh, really help uh, to develop. Mm -hmm. so, so we have those, those three generative models. Um, some of them are, um, are more recent, you know, uh, some of them are faster to run, so we still need to converge on, on the best one. But basically, you can, you can choose one of those three, mm -hmm. train using the data sets you collected. Mm -hmm. And once you have this, the, 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 the pre-trained model, after a few hours, uh, we, we, are, we are able to show that you can even train it on a MacBook Pro for over the night, you know, mm -hmm. and already you can uh, control, uh, you can use this pre-trained model to who, uh, I mean, it, it works already after after a night of training on the MacBook Pro, and um, and then we have the code to record a new data set. But this time we don't teleoperate it. Mm -hmm. We don't tele teleoperate the arm. We actually use the, the pre-trained model to control the follower arms that do the action. Mm -hmm. And so, and once again, you have at the end of the recording, you have a new data set, but this time it is, it is um, uh, an inference data set, mm -hmm. and you can also visualize it with the, with the same tool. So we made it very easy and, and like we, yeah, we have yeah. A, 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 the smallest amount of tool mm -hmm. that allows you to, to do uh, the most. Yeah. I have used it and I feel like it's a very powerful tool for uh, any machine learning engineer because it gives everything the best of all the worlds in one place and you don't have to go to different uh, codes for for collecting data, training it and evaluating it. It's all in one place and I like how sleek it is. Uh, my next following question would be, uh, as you said, that you have developed a middle work framework, right? Um, so this middle work frame, uh, middleware framework um, why did you go and choose uh, a simple Python library when uh, when we know that the robotics world is heading towards using ROS or other uh, toolkits for developing robots? So, was there uh, how was the decision process and what was the idea behind using simple Python libraries? Yeah, I think um, uh, I mean ROS. It is a super capable um, software. Uh, it does a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like we, with the advances in AI, in uh, neural networks, uh, in, uh, in the end to end, we, we had the possibility to start from scratch mm -hmm. uh, with, a, with a middleware that would be even simpler won't be as powerful, like won't be able to do all the stuff that uh, Ross is doing, but at least to focus on one, which is end-to-end. -end. So it's like doing teleoperation, controlling the robots, um, like being able to send a uh, goal position to the motor. So, you know, it's, it's really narrow, but, but this to, to do it with a very simple code in Python, because most of the people right now in AI they use Python, yep. they don't use C++. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to lower the barrier to entry for, for all those people to be able to, to come to robotics, which, which is, for me, the next, the next frontier to AI. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so with end-to-end, -end, we had this opportunity to, do, to, to, to work on this middleware and to make it uh, very simple. And I would, I would admit that I learned a lot by doing so. Okay. Because... Uh, I was using also other type of middleware mm -hmm. uh, similar to 
I would say similar to ROS mm -hmm. that were written uh, very um, yeah in C plus plus and so on that were quite complex mm -hmm. um, and a lot a lot of the complexity were hidden behind this. Yeah. So sometimes I could not understand exactly what was going on. It was much easier for me to debug and to learn how how are things uh, uh, yeah working behind the scene. So with this middleware in Python, everyone can have a, a, a really deep understanding uh, as long as you, you can invest a bit of time, um, like uh, the usual uh, Python stuff, you know, breaking, uh, adding some breakpoints, figuring out uh, uh, how everything works. And that's what we try to do with our tutorials. So we have a full tutorial and, and uh, instead of asking people to just run the commands, we, we really make an effort to, uh, to, uh, to teach them uh, what every uh, little function is doing mm -hmm. and the minimal set of function you need to control the, the robots. Yeah, that, that's great. That's uh, good to hear that it's making it easier for people who are in machine learning and AI because they are already using Python and it's easier for them to uh, start using Python again rather than relearning to use C++ uh, or ROS. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and I would add one thing, sorry. Uh, it's also, ma it makes the, the installation much easier. Yeah. Because then it's just another Python package. It's a, it's a SDK. Uh -huh. uh, you have the you have uh, you use we use OpenCV to get uh, the frame from the camera, yeah. um, like the Python package OpenCV, and then we use the DynamicSell SDK. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also a Python package, so we have all the dependencies, and everything is in a Conda environment. Yeah. You can install in a Conda environment uh, with pip. So. Um, so I, I know that with Ross, even though it's very powerful, mm -hmm. sometimes you get stuck during the installation. Yes. So uh, and so we wanted to, we wanted to make uh, things very easy uh, that, that way as well. Okay. The installation process. Yeah. So my follow up question would be: uh, It makes it easier as a toolkit or a framework for uh, people to enter in, uh, like without having much of trouble with installation or learning new things. But again, like Lerbot was started like six months back, and we have seen developments in the uh, in the fields of AI and machine learning where uh, people were using robot manipulation tasks and collecting data sets in different uh, data formats. And we also know that there is this big uh, data set uh, corpus called as OpenX embodiment, and they have multiple data sets in different data formats. What I, uh, when using Lerobot, but what I uh, understood was you are also providing uh, tools for converting these data sets to Lerobot format. And what was your idea behind that? And what was your goal behind that was, and other things. Can you please explain? Yeah, so, um, okay, so, so first we, the, the advantage that we have uh, at Trading Face is that we we can invest more time and more people into designing very simple engineering tool for the community. Um, and researchers, uh, they don't have so much time to do this. Of course, they are they are able to do great engineering tools, but most of the time they need to invest it in uh, research ideas, writing, publishing, mm -hmm. um, and doing small demo. So for us, we have a kind of unique incentive in because our not, uh, our primary goal is not to publish. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as I, I, I said that, it means that we have a bit more time to figure out the right interface, the right data format, uh, that will be future proof. Mm -hmm. And an, an example of that is that the robot data set, um, we, we, from the start, we wanted to use videos, uh, to, uh, as a, as a storing format, mm -hmm. as a storage format for, uh, the camera stream. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it seems obvious, 
you know that you 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 have a camera and you you record a, a video mm -hmm. uh but OpenX and a lot of data formats they were using images instead yeah. so png uh or jpeg mm -hmm. or um sometimes storing in the in raw format mm -hmm. so not even compressed or yeah. with some different type of com uh, of compre uh, compression so for us we said yeah of course when you want to store uh, a few frames it's better to store them in in the video format but the video format no nobody i mean not a lot of people at least in the open source nobody was using um, video format in in, robo in robotics as far as i i, I know for end-to-end -end training mm -hmm. you know because uh with the default uh parameters of the video encoding mm -hmm. it is it is made for movies it is made to watch the frame from left to right yes you know from the beginning to the end and so uh you know sometimes when you try to go a bit in the past when you when you when you watch a movie you have some artifacts yes. that appears and so on and so uh, uh that's because uh i'm getting a bit technical but basically you have um you have a, a kind of keyframe uh and when you want to you have some keyframes and when you want to access the the future frame you you need to decode a few frames and you just store the differences mm -hmm. between the keyframe and yes. those frames yep. and so um we tune those hyperparameters mm -hmm so that we have more keyframe and so that the loading time is very fast oh. and so we make uh we make it in terms of storage we are much more competitive um in terms of loading time we are uh, very competitive if you uh and we are competitive if you if you need only one frame mm -hmm. but of course in the future we want to load a continuous stream a frame mm -hmm. and so that's when the video format is much much better and then lastly it's much easier to uh, to share and to visualize data set online mm -hmm. with a video format yep and so we can like uh, you 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 can see our um, our visualized data mm -hmm. set space yes. on our page and you can di directly visualize the data set there is no loading time mm -hmm. you almost no loading time you can switch to episode switch to frame with almost no loading time because all, everything is already supported in your browser mm -hmm. um, so that's the kind of engineering uh, that we, we we did and so now we want to convert all the data set out uh, out there to this uh, new uh, uh, new optimized format, mm -hmm. which is the robot dataset. Uh, so we we uh, yeah we added some code to uh, to be able to load HDF5 dataset, for instance the, uh, the original Aloha mm -hmm. dataset, and to convert them into the robot dataset. You can visualize them online. Uh, you and we also did it for all the OpenX dataset, and we hope that after a few months. Uh, more and more people will be uh, able to to uh, to do the same uh, to record directly with the robot data sets etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and we want to um, be able to host the uh, biggest crowdsourced data sets mm -hmm. for, for robotic data uh, to do uh, to train the next generation of foundational uh, model for robotics yeah totally open source maybe. yeah that was a good explanation to my question and uh while you were explaining you mentioned a lot about sharing data sets online the compression and making it easier for uploading and downloading and also crowdsourcing a big data set for machine learning so that people can directly start using data sets out of the box without having to invest much time on collecting data sets themselves so this is one of the coolest features that I found in the Lirobot toolkit was how easy it was to upload and download data sets from the Hugging Face app and also trained or pre-trained models. So how do you think that this will encourage more collaboration and sharing within the robotics and machine learning community? Um, I mean, from, uh, yeah, we, we, we listen a lot to the, to the community 
Uh, I think uh, the robotics community were talking about uh, d data silo. Mm -hmm. uh, like there were a lot of uh, different inst institution labs. Uh, they were all collecting their own data on their own format. And um, OpenX was uh, one of the first uh, big crowdsourced data set where there was uh, an effort to collect all this, uh, this data. And out of uh, it, uh, out of this OpenX data set effort, there were a lot of publication, very interesting publication, like OpenVLA, um, even like the RT1, RT2, I think some of them were uh, at least RT2, RTX, like all the state of the art, I would say. Uh, they they were uh, uh, policies. They were trained on this. Uh, some uh, uh, you know the, the recent paper. So so I think it it with I think people are really waiting for this new format. Um, and um, also we we want to add language to describe the 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 the, the data sets. Or the episode, you know, mm -hmm. want to to add this language like OpenX did as well, uh, so that we can train some uh, some models that take language as input mm -hmm. um, to add some kind of reasoning capability, capability multitask capability, uh, multiple form factor also mm -hmm. to to train one big model on multiple uh, uh, data set recorded with different robots. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that out of it, yeah, it's just the next step. Yep. Uh, and, and maybe at some point we will reach the, the, the imaginate moment mm -hmm. where it, it will be clear. Yes. Uh, and, and it might be already the case that, uh, training on, on, uh, actually fine tuning models that are pre-trained on ImageNet mm -hmm. is the way to go, uh, for robotics. Yep. And uh, we want to uh, to to just uh, empower, yeah, empower, empower that. Yeah. So as you said, like it gives you flexibility to train different types of machine learning models, and not uh, just focusing on the few that you mentioned, like Diffusion, Act, or any other. And how do you think, like new developers or new researchers who who want to come up with new uh, models or new training policies? Uh, will it be easier for them to integrate their own models or own policies into the little bot toolkit? Yeah, so um, we we want it. Um, the thing is, we want, we also want to keep our our um, code base quite simple because it's still. Uh, uh, I mean, we started six six months ago, so we we want to have the time to work on the fundamentals mm -hmm. and to, to invest a lot of engineering time mm -hmm. so that um, uh, we have solid foundations for the future. Yes. And uh, already uh, I noticed that people are forking low robots, adding their own policy mm -hmm. or data sets, and, uh, and they put the link of the fork on, uh, on their uh, paper page. You know, on the on their project, their research page. So I think it's a it's a very nice way to 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 do, um, because as soon as you have a fork, it's easy to install. Uh, you you follow the same standard as we already do, uh, so it's easy for people to pass. And that's really something we want uh, more people to to be doing. Uh, it's it shows that uh, our code is simple enough that people can integrate. Uh, by their, their, uh, their themselves without asking for help, uh, it shows that uh, yeah the, the project uh, is useful and so on. So that's great. Um, and, and then we we still want to support kind of milestone model, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so which is totally objective, you know. Uh, but uh, for me, Act was a, to a milestone. The model that was developed uh, with. Uh, with the Trosen uh, robotics arm, I think uh, Act was really a milestone to show it's simple, uh, fast to 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 do the the it's qu uh, quite fast model. Um, then diffusion policy was also a milestone. I think a lot of people are are talking uh, talking about it. Uh, then I really liked uh, personally VQBet from NYU. We had them to integrate uh, this new model because it is based on uh, on GPT. So. Um, and also, uh, there is this vector quantized aspect. Mm -hmm. 
there are other models, but we, we cannot, uh, as of now, add all support for, for, for them. Uh, we want, we need to focus a, a bit more on the, on the library, but we can think that if the project grows, uh, we might, uh, like a robot might become the, the transformers of, uh, of AI for robotics, yeah. where we have, where we have a lot of very, uh, uh one, uh, one file, mm -hmm. uh, definition of state of the art models, yeah. um, so that everyone can, can, yeah, try them, uh, improve them, fine tune them, upload the, 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 the fine tune on, the, on the hub, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think it will develop. We hope it will develop like AI for robotics will develop like LLM did mm -hmm. or v and now vision LM, uh, is doing so. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, as you said, like it has different, uh, data sets and different models and researchers have the freedom to choose anything or uh, they like and they are uh, allowed to improve on it uh, so and I, I, I also know that aloha kits you, we have been talking about aloha kits for a long time now uh, throughout the conversation but aloha kits are not the only robotic setup that uh, the robot supports and there are multiple different robots that uh, the robot also supports how does it make it easier for users to switch between these robots and uh, without having to adjust their entire workflow. And yeah, also tell me about all other robots that uh, you have integrated uh, till uh, today. And yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I mean, first, uh, there, there were already a few, uh, I mean, the, the main code base uh that we took inspiration of was the the original aloha uh act uh by um um tony yeah by tony zhao uh, at stanford yes. uh it showed that it was quite simple actually to to record data set and so on and and we took uh, inspiration um but this uh this repo was only for aloha yes um, and then there, are, there was a fork, mm -hmm. I think a kind of fork mm -hmm. from Alexander Koch, yes. uh, who added his own uh, affordable robot arm, mm -hmm. which cost uh, roughly 650, like the, the kit, uh -huh. the leader and follower. And so uh, Alexander added this uh, dynamic soul SDK layer. Mm -hmm. And so we also took great inspiration from it, and um, and and we decided also to focus uh, on affordable robot arms. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we uh, discussed with him, and we decided to add uh, his robots. So now we were working on two robots, the Aloha, where we we knew we could reproduce the state of the art, and there were already data set and so on. And then the um, the the core uh, the the core robot arm, mm -hmm. affordable robot arm. Both were using uh, dynamic cell SDK. Yep. I mean the dynamic cell model. So we could in one go implement it. Mm -hmm. So it was extremely useful, and it gave us also ideas on how to integrate mm -hmm. uh, those two robots and to reuse a lot of code. Like you just, we, we actually have two files. Mm -hmm. uh, YAML files. Yep. You have the uh, the Aloha one, yes. where you have uh, like uh, a bit more motors. You have mm -hmm. four, you have four cameras yep. that are defined, and then we also have the the core mm -hmm. uh, .yaml, uh, where you have fewer exactly um, uh, unimanual, uh, like only one arm, mm -hmm. but the other one is the the the, uh, the Aloha is by man by manual. Mm -hmm. And so it, it gave us a lot of uh, ideas on, on how to kind of refactor the code, make it simple to use in, in those two setups. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and, and now we are trying to add more and more uh, robots, um, especially we are, we, we are working on, on a new version of an affordable arm, which uh, this time use uh, FITEC motors. Mm -hmm. So use a FITEC SDK. Okay. Uh, that, and, and so, uh, the arm cost uh, 100, uh, roughly 100 euros, 
mm-hmm. per, per arm. Oh. So if you have two, it's like 200, uh, 200 uh, euros. And, um, and also it gives us a lot of, of inspiration on how, how to change parts of the code so that mm-hmm. it's easier to add more robots to it. And hopefully at some point it will be easier enough mm-hmm. uh, so that uh, uh, people won't need our help mm-hmm. to add their own robots with their own SDK and so on. Yeah. That's great to hear. Like, uh cheap uh, robots that any hobbyist or any student can uh, buy because they're affordable and try to train their own machine learning models on them and that gives them a whole new world to work along with. But again, uh, I have a question that is regarding the hardware. Like when we go to buy cheaper affordable arms or we compromise on factors like precision, strength, and other factors that are essential for dexterous manipulation tasks. So how do you balance it out? And what's your opinion about purchasing high-end uh, precise arms and low-end? Who should actually purchase these arms? And who, uh, what's the idea about it? Yeah, I think, I mean, our goal, the uh, robot hacking face, is to make uh, AI for robotics more accessible. Mm-hmm. So. Of course, our prior, uh, our first focus mm-hmm. it's really to make those arms uh, very accessible to and to have a simple su- uh, uh, support for it. Which and since it's so, I mean, it's quite uh, like with two hundred uh, euros. It's uh, it's it, it's it can become even affordable for students. So. Um, for some students, at least, yes. uh, with maybe the help of the institution, but it's still affordable. Even for us, we are hosting a, a hackathon uh, at the end of October, mm-hmm. and so we uh, we we bought uh, more than fifty arms. Oh, and and like be, because we were developing this uh, more affordable arm, mm-hmm. we could we could do it. Yeah. Uh, if it was uh, three times the, the price, it could be a bit expensive for us. Yeah. But now it's possible with mm-hmm. to buy it. <laughs> yes. So that so so uh, what's cool is that you don't you 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 don't uh, care that much about breaking the arms. Yeah. I never broke the arm, by <laughs> the way. On, uh, those affordable arms, they are quite solid. I never broke a motor, uh-huh. which is quite surprising, you know. Yeah. But I, I I really manipulated a lot and still quite solid. Um, so it gives people um, yeah knowledge about how uh, to train, uh, how to control, yeah how to train the robots and to do simple tasks like picking up stuff um, and um, uh, and yeah for instance we we, we even train on, on the core, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the first affordable uh, arm, we even train it to fold t-shirts. Okay. And, um, uh, but the range mm-hmm. is not very, is not yeah. uh, very big. So you, you had to, you could not do it for a very big uh, t-shirt. For <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, and, and also, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, when you only have a reaper, mm-hmm. yeah. it's not a, it's not like a hand. It's, you know, it's quite hand. cheap. So, so, so to pick up stuff, it can be a bit difficult sometimes. Mm-hmm. It depends on the object. Actually, uh, if you if you want to pick up uh, a glass of water mm-hmm. with an affordable arm, it's extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. Actually, w- with the core, it it was not possible. Mm-hmm. Um, with the new one, it is a bit more powerful, so you can hold uh, a glass of water. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you are still a bit limited. Yes. So it's nice to train yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's amazing the first time a neural network controlled the, the robot arm yes. by itself. You know? yeah. uh, but of course, you can be limited uh, depending on the task you want to automate mm-hmm. in terms of which and in terms of what you can get. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope, so, so it's nice to switch to some, uh, I would say, more capable uh, robot arms, such as the one you're, 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 you're making. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I hope that uh, in the coming, yeah, in the future, even the most powerful arm will be, or the more, most powerful robots will be more and more accessible. Yes. So yeah, I'm and quite excited about actually it. Actually, we here at Trosin are taking uh, initiatives to get uh, powerful arms and making them cheaper so that uh, people can really afford it and they can start their machine learning journey as soon as possible without worrying about spending a lot of money on buying the kits. Yeah, but that's for another day and uh, moving forward, I wanted to know that. So now that we have discussed most of the little bot uh, stuff, like collecting data sets, evaluating models, training them, and we cover a lot of ground in this. And what kind of feedback have you received from the early users of the little bot toolkit? And how has that shaped uh, what the platform looks like today? Uh, yeah, so we have a Discord channel. Uh, I think we are we have uh, 1,800 uh, uh, users of this uh, of this platform uh, of, of this Discord. Uh, we have uh, some channels to discuss uh, software, middleware, hardware. Um, to we have a channel dedicated for help. So it's uh, it's easy for us to to follow. Uh, what the people struggle with or what they want to achieve with the robot and so on. And so we can quickly help. But when we, when we start to receive several times the same question, mm -hmm. then it gives us a lot of feedback on what we need to prioritize. Mm -hmm. So uh, for instance, we are now developing the second version of the robot data set. Mm -hmm. uh, it's... Um, it, with so it's a similar form, a very similar format, still video and so on. Um, but we add more functionalities. Um, in particular, we make it easier for people to port their own format to the new the robot uh, dataset uh, format um, with uh, methods such as. Uh, uh, I mean, we are still working on it, but it would be like an uh, ad frame. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, you can think of uh, this uh, class as a, an empty data set okay. and will, you will prog progressively add frame. Mm -hmm. um, and be behind, I mean, the, the code is quite simple, but you, there are some, uh, some multi uh, threading to, to prefer to fast. Very, in a very fast way to, to save the frames, to encode them, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm very glad that uh, we got this project received so much attention, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it it really helps to see uh, to see what we can do better, uh, what we need to focus on, uh, and and. And our goal is still to have a very simple code so that yeah. people can um, quickly, I mean, we receive a lot of uh, positive feedback as well, yeah. which was uh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Uh, like even some roboticists mm -hmm. that told us, uh, that's so cool, I now have uh, a leader and follower arm <laughs> at home. Oh, like okay. usually people never had this. Yes. It was in a, in a lab somewhere. Uh, and and now they have it at home, and it, and you can automate stuff at home, yep. and the interface is super easy and so on. So so I think we yeah we are still uh, we need to uh, to improve some stuff. We are uh -huh. quite aware uh, so on on some aspects, but um, it it still helps a lot a lot of people. So uh, yeah, we are really happy about that. Yeah. I, I really like how uh, LittleBot is all about community, people, and you have so many uh, platforms like Discord, the Hugging Face uh, platform for discussions and everything. And because community contributions are such a big part of uh, LittleBot, how do you, like, also people uh, upload data sets and upload their views and upload uh, models, trained, pre-trained models on Hugging Face Hub and LittleBot uh, data set hub. Uh, what how do you plan on keeping the quality of these data sets and models high as possible when more people start sharing their data, data sets? Yeah, I think it will be uh, similar to um, to the, the the image and language data sets. Mm -hmm. 
for uh, for the, the the large language model and uh, and VLM. Um, I think uh, that yeah, we want to to have to add support for filtering this data set, this data set exploring the data sets in a in a very fast manner and so on. So we are st still uh, thinking about it. But uh, yeah, that's another important aspect that uh, we will soon be uh, working on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I think it's still working, but I think it will be totally doable and it will be super important to, to be able to pick the subset mm -hmm. of episode and of, of data that you want to train on. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it will be super important and also to give credit Yes. To all the all the people that uh, that pa that participated to, to these efforts, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I really feel like uh, the we have been talking about how it's easier to compress it into a video format, which was not done earlier, and this gives us a chance to visualize the data sets nicely and using the rerun IO that you have created. Um, so. I feel like visualization of episodes or data sets is quite important so that we can filter out the data that's corrupted or it is not up to the mark. And what, what's your view on that? Like, um, Yeah, yeah, I mean, totally. I mean, first of all, a, a detail is like, uh, before we upload the data set, mm -hmm. we check that we can load all the frame because we calculate the, the statistics of the data set. Mm -hmm. So we go once we go once we go through the through the uh, the, the, the data set, it's quite fast actually to do. Um, uh, but uh, but and then there is a visualization. So of course, uh, just going through uh, like sometimes there are people they have they struggle with uh, their uh, their model. So they they ask for help. They they post the link to their data set. So I look into it. And I can quickly uh, inspect all the episodes, mm -hmm. and I can I, I can get a feel of uh, um, some possible ideas of yes. why why it's not it's not working. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there are too little episodes, too high variance for to training a model from scratch, or you know. Um, so yeah, visualization it's. Uh, it's super important, and then there are also some tricks that uh, we are we are working on. But it's like you have a pre-trained model, you uh, run inference mm -hmm. on your training data, okay, and you compute the loss, okay, yeah. that's and then you you can visualize the frames with the highest loss, mm -hmm. and that's the frame that possibly have some issues, okay. are a bit out of distribution, so you can filter out the data like that. And there are plenty of uh, ways. You can also possibly use some uh, pre-trained vision mm -hmm. language model mm -hmm. that could help you to to know uh, at uh, like how um, yeah the context of the episode of mm -hmm. the frame and to be able to filter out based on this context. Um, and uh, yeah, may, you, we can have many more ideas. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was a good discussion. Finally, uh, I have just one question uh, left. What's next for the robot? And are there any new features? As you said right now, there will be a couple of new features or updates that users can look forward to in the near future. Yeah, so I mean, we want to add more and more robots. Uh, we hope uh, that we will be able to add the, the next generation uh, of uh, your uh, your arms, uh, possibly. Uh, I don't know uh, if... Uh, like possibly some uh, mobile setup. I mean, you 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 have the the mobile uh, Aloha, uh, so we we would like also to to add support for it. Uh, so I think yeah, adding more robots, it will ensure that that people will be if they have the robots, they will be able to contribute and so on. Um, and so now uh, we also want to to really focus on the engineering to make things even simpler to use. Um, and then uh, maybe to to develop uh, our own uh, policy as well. Yeah. Um, we want, uh, yeah, to to have a, a policy that uh, we hope it will be the the go to policy. It will be it will be pre trained, and people won't have to to train their uh, like the first experience will be you 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 assemble your arm, and uh, you have a block, and you just use the our pre trained policy, which is already. Uh, um, 
very view invariant, like camera invariant, and so on. And the, the policy just uh, grasp a block. Uh, that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And when you say new robots, uh, are we looking forward to anything other than uh, ma- manipulation tasks, like something like mobile robots or drones or humanoids? Are we looking to forward to that? Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay. I mean, our framework, our framework could make it possible. We're also uh, uh, working on the bi- uh, bipedal robots. Mm-hmm. We want to add a stack to learn a, a biped uh, walk mm-hmm. as well. Um, so yeah, many uh, exciting stuff. Uh, but uh, we also want to focus on the fundamentals. I think it's super important to, yes. for the long term uh, growth, uh, growth of uh, of uh, AI for robotics. Oh, that's that's very exciting, and I feel like in near future we'll be having much more developments in the free, uh, world of AI and machine learning with new robots coming into picture and making it like the toolkit you have developed will make it easier for people to train their robots like seamlessly without having much issues of installation or complex setups or diff- difficult workflows. Everything is simple, sleek in one place. And I feel like it's a great tool. And thank you so much for uh, joining us, giving us your time. And it was a great conversation. I got to learn a lot of new things and hopefully you enjoyed the time as well. Yeah, thank you so much for all your questions. And uh, yeah, thank you, Shantanu. And also thanks to uh, uh, yeah all the all the people that make uh, Chosen Robotics uh, possible and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, what you will do uh, and, and the, the new robots, the new cool robots you're working on. Yeah, sure. Like uh, We'll be coming up with the next version of the Aloha kits for maybe uh, we, we are planning on different versions, more powerful, more precise and more affordable versions as well. Uh, I guess it's next year or by end of this year, we'll be launching the new arms and yeah. Looking forward to more collaborations and more efforts from Hugging Face and uh, Cross and Robotics as well to build up this robotics community to its best. Yeah, thank you so much. Cool. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.